Tennessee teenager Emma Walker seemed to be living her teenage dream. She was a cheerleader at Central High School in Knoxville, surrounded by loving friends and family. In dating a boy on the football team, she lived a life most teenagers can only dream of. However, tragedy struck and everything came crashing down in the fall of 2016 when Emma Walker was found dead by her mother in her bedroom. But what happened to Emma Walker? Who would have wanted to hurt such a lively human? Jill and Mark Walker welcomed Emma Jean into the world on March 20th, 2000. She lived in Knoxville, Tennessee with her parents and her brother, Evan. Those who knew her described her as passionate, sweet, and a down-to-earth person. She joined the squad as a cheerleader in the fall of 2014, the only freshman to do so that year. Emma loved being a cheerleader and took her role very seriously. She also cherished spending time with her cheerleader friends. She was not just a cheerleader, but also an excellent student who aspired to be a neo-nurse or veterinarian. Emma met William Riley Gull, commonly known as Riley at school. Riley was a top performer and popular student. He was also an active member of the community church. He loved video games and his friends said he was a bit of a nerd and not at all the jock type. Riley was a junior and two years older than 14-year-old Emma. Although Emma had a huge crush on him, he was dating someone else at the time, but it didn't take long for him to break up with his current girlfriend to be with Emma. And they began their adventure as the romance story couple, the cheerleader and the football star. Although this would seem to be a movie love story, Emma's parents noticed a red flag pretty early when Riley broke up with his ex to be with Emma, but still promised his ex he would take her to the prom even though he was already dating Emma. Much to Emma's parents' dismay, Riley took the other girl to junior prom and only took Emma to senior prom. This may not appear to be a huge concern, but it was to Emma's parents since they didn't want their daughter to be hurt. According to Emma's friends, Riley didn't want to meet and get to know them, and he also didn't want Emma to spend time with them, quickly becoming possessive and controlling of her. He would try to control what clothes she wore, go to her work, and wait there for hours until she got off and obsessively call and text when she did something without him. Riley and Emma frequently broke up and reconciled during their two years of dating, often having intense arguments. Riley had sent her messengers on Snapchat that said, I hate you, I despise everything about you, and you're dead to me, I'll check the obituary. When Emma's parents read these messages, they immediately banned Riley from entering their house and took away their daughter's phone. However, Riley gave Emma an iPad touch so they could continue to communicate. Emma's parents tried to convince her to break things off with Riley. After two years of this intermediate relationship, Riley graduated and enrolled at Maryville College, which was only 30 minutes away from where Emma lived. Riley and Emma were still not distant enough from each other, like her parents hoped. So her parents took more drastic measures by forbidding Emma from leaving the house except for work or cheer practice. Emma was grounded. Surprisingly, this actually worked, and she was once again her cheerful self. Around Thanksgiving break, she saw a Snapchat photo of Riley with another girl and she made the decision to finally call it quits, much to her friend's relief. Riley, as expected, did not handle this well. He drank a lot of beer and took a lot of Vicodin pills in an unsuccessful attempt to commit suicide. After the breakup, Emma's high school football team won a game on November 18th and since she was doing so much better, her parents let her attend the celebratory party that night. Emma began receiving strange and suspicious texts threatening her at 11.30 p.m., including, I've got someone you love. I'll hurt them if you don't obey. Step outside. Emma was initially concerned, but dismissed it as Riley's friends making a joke until she received a text. He's in the ditch beside the house. It's a shame you can all of a sudden not regard someone else's life. She requested her friend, Zach, to accompany her outside so they could check if everything was okay and sure enough, they saw Riley lying face down in a ditch near the house. When the pair reached him, he was holding his head and seemed confused. He said he had been kidnapped by someone 
who drove him there. He didn't remember a thing. Emma told Riley they were done and there was no chance of reconciliation. Disappointed, Riley left calling his friend Noah to pick him up and telling him the same story, which Noah also didn't believe. Distressed, Emma decided to stay at her friend's for the night, who drove her home the next morning. On their way home, they spotted a man wearing all black walking around in the neighborhood. And at around 10.15 a.m., Emma was at home getting ready to meet her mom for lunch when someone started banging really hard on her front door. Emma got scared and ended up texting Riley, since she hated him, but she needed him, so he quickly got to her house. When Riley arrived, the mystery man had disappeared. Jill Walker went home to look for her daughter as she hadn't shown up to lunch. She found Riley and Emma sitting on the driveway talking. She approached him and reminded Riley he wasn't allowed to come near the house and asked him to leave. As September, November 20th approached, approached, Emma was beginning to feel less scared about what had happened. Her parents had driven her to and from work that day to make sure she was okay and later that evening, she went to have some ice cream with her dad. It was a peaceful day that ended with a quiet night as she went to bed. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, her father heard a tremendous pounding noise. Later in an interview, he explained that it sounded like someone was inside the house and banged the door incredibly hard, which shocked him. Then he heard another loud noise, so he got up and went to check on Emma and Evan, checking both of their rooms. When he opened Emma's door, she was peacefully lying on her bed, seemingly sleeping. He inspected the entire home and saw nothing strange, so he convinced himself it was a dream and went back to bed. The following day, Monday, November 21st, both Mark and Jill were awake and getting ready for the day at 6 a.m. when Jill decided to go wake her daughter up, as she normally did. Jill called for Emma to wake up numerous times and even nudged her legs with no answer. Jill said she knew something was wrong when she looked at Emma's face. It was something no mother should ever have to witness. Her daughter was pale and blue-lipped. Jill panicked and called her son in to check Emma's pulse and to their horror, there was no pulse. 16-year-old Emma Jane Walker was dead. When paramedics arrived, they initially assumed it was suicide, overdose, or natural causes that caused her death overnight. When Emma didn't show up at school that day, rumors quickly spread, especially about Emma committing suicide. Because she was so well known, there were vigils and a lot of public grieving. People really wanted to know what had happened to her, so the inquiry began. When detectives arrived at the crime scene, they thought it was an accident or death by natural causes. But after further inspection, they noticed a hole in the wall the size of a pin. This showed that there were two bullet holes shot to the corner of the house where Emma's bed was. This told investigators that whoever did this had to know exactly that this was Emma's bedroom and where her bed was. The police started taking people in for questioning and asked the typical questions. Who do you think killed Emma? And Riley's name kept coming up. So police searched his room, but found no evidence leaking him to the murder. That was until one of his friends, Alex, informed authorities that Riley told him the Saturday before Emma's death that he had stolen his grandfather's gun for protection. Another friend, Noah, told the police that Riley had asked him if he knew how to remove fingerprints from a gun the day after Emma was killed. Riley also asked Noah and Alex if they would help him throw the gun away in the Tennessee River. Riley was brought in for questioning as a result of this. Riley stated that he was at his friend Noah's house at the time of the death and that he slept over. Riley never said Emma's name during the entire two-hour interrogation, always referring to her as the girl and the girl who passed away, which detectives found odd. When questioned about the gun, he repeatedly denied it. Riley was the only suspect at this point, but they did not have enough to make an arrest. Riley texted his two friends immediately after leaving the interview, asking why they told the police about the gun and begged him not to speak to the cops anymore because he needed time to get rid of the gun so that he wasn't blamed for something he didn't do. However, Alex and Noah were still talking to the cops and had been the second they found out Emma had died. The two wanted to help the officers in the investigation and they knew they could retrieve the murder weapon. The pair were determined to help. 
They made a plan with the police to catch Riley in his own lies. At this point, Alex and Noah were very certain that Riley was the one who murdered Emma, so they agreed to assist him in disposing of the gun. The next day, Alex and Noah went to Riley's house to play video games while wearing a wiretap. The police planned to arrest Riley as soon as he pulled the gun out. The boys would text the police a code word, signaling them to move in. The three started talking, and as the conversation reached Emma, Riley began by denying any involvement and said that he wanted his friends to retract their statements to the police by claiming they were high on drugs or something, and that the three of them should go throw the gun in the Tennessee River to get rid of it. They're never going to find it if it's in the Tennessee River. They got in the car and drove to Riley's stepfather's house where he hid the gun in a trash bag, grabbed it, and then drove to a parking area near the river. During this time, the two friends were in contact with the police, and when Riley chose to get out of the car and throw the gun into the river, the cops moved in and caught him. 48 hours after the murder of Emma Walker, her murderer was behind bars. Riley was charged with first-degree murder as well as six other counts. When police searched the garbage bag for the gun, they also discovered Riley's black clothing from that night. The trial of Riley began a year and a half later, and he pleaded not guilty. He didn't testify, and his legal team called no witnesses to testify. Riley's defense team claimed this was a reckless homicide rather than a murder, which surprised the court because they had just revealed he was the one who fired the gun. However, the defense team claimed that the rounds were fired with the intention of scaring Emma so she would call Riley to come over and rescue her. Reckless homicide carries a substantially lesser sentence in the state of Tennessee. However, the prosecution was quick to point out that the bullets were fired at a certain angle and on a certain point, almost too coincidental to be reckless homicide. Finally, the jury found William Riley Gould guilty of first-degree murder along with stalking, theft, reckless endangerment, and being in possession of a firearm during a dangerous felony. He was sentenced to life in prison, with the minimum term of 51 years before he could be considered for parole. He will be in his 70s. Since her death, Emma's friends and family worked tirelessly to keep her legacy alive. Her high school has a scholarship in her name. Her love for animals was such a big part of her character that the Walker family built a dog park in her honor. All in all, her case is tragic. Such a charismatic woman whose life was cut short by an undeserving, over-obsessive ex-boyfriend. <laughs>